Good morning, everybody. And thank you for the introduction. And uh, being last on a sustainability panel, I won't uh, reiterate all the points that have already been made, so I, I'm going to cover the safety services. Um, I'm an ex-radio officer, uh, tapped a Morse key. I was displaced by automation uh, and GMDSS, and ironically now I, I look after GMDSS. Um, I'm also uh, a director of the World Maritime University, very supportive of developing countries in terms of bringing them up to uh, the levels that we have in the developed world in shipping. I'm a director of CIRM, look after the manufacturers, and an ambassador of the Sailor Society. I really have a lot of empathy for our, our seafarers. Uh, in my such role within the GMDSS, the Global Maritime Stress and Safety Service. Uh, so t today we have a Inmarsat C, he's 26 years old, he's been doing uh, a great job out there um, from the day that we were conceived as a, a GMDSS provider. Fleet 77, uh, we are at end of life in in 2020, and fleet safety is the new service that we, we're talking about. This is now controlling itself. So we look after 1.6 million seafarers, that's what we are doing every day, they rely on us to communicate with the rest of the world. There are 3,200 marine casualties and incidents that occur on a ship that we are, have reported. This has been reported by EMSA. Far too many people at sea having ca uh, casualties. 191 reported piracy and armed robbery. These are the statistics that are occurring today in terms of piracy. It is still rife throughout a lot of areas. 976 persons injured in shipping today. We say a lot of uh, accidents are caused by human error, but there's far too many accidents occurring. The migrant issue here in the Mediterranean is huge. It is a political problem, but when somebody's on a boat and they're in distress, it becomes a search and rescue problem. This is really an issue for us. 360,000 people annually drown. Actually, that's the 2016 figure. 2017 is 372,000 people drown at sea every year. That's not just seafarers. That's people taking a boat out for a leisure craft or taking a, a surfboard out. But it's far too many people drown at sea. Whilst I finished my presentation, that would be an average 10 people would die at sea. There's a lot more we can do. A tsunami comes through and people drown in fishing boats because they will go to sea with a mobile phone but they won't go to sea with a life jacket. This is an amazing situation that we're in and we have to do more about it. On average, Inmarsat receives six distress alerts from SOLAS vessels per day. Not all of them are are uh, going to re require the assets of a search and rescue to be issued. Some of them are contained within the vessel itself. Some of them are false. But again, six times a day somebody is asking for help, what they consider as a distress. We have spent last year 15 hours on the phone in a distress situation with vessels, helping them, trying to assist. All of the distress services are for free from Inmarsat. Something that we've been doing for a very long period of time. We have over 200,000 GMDSS safety terminals out there on ships today, trying to connect the world. We also provide non-SOLAS safety services for free, so that everybody has the chance to provide those services. But not everybody takes them up, and they still go to sea. Every month, 30,000 messages for navigation, meteorological, piracy, are sent to vessels. It's far too much for most officers to read, but it's there. It's trying to prevent and be proactive around those safety situations. We maintain a 99.9% .9 network. That's what we have to do. That's what the IMO mandated us for. We were start up as an IGO, we went private, but we have to keep that network at 99.9% .9 because when you press that button to say, I'm in, I have a problem, we need to be there for you. And this year we took our new services, Fleet Safety, through IMO assessment. IMSO uh, are, the, are the body that audits uh, in Marsat. When we privatised, because we provide a public service, 
we have to be audited, and IMSO are the people that uh, audit us for, for all of the features. We took us, it took that process quite um, stringently through the through their assessment. So, what is fleet safety in terms of where we go today? So, fleet safety components a number of components. Safety Net Two allows a maritime safety information provider to send messages to any vessel anywhere in the world. It is a very intuitive web-based solution, and it's taken services to the next level. And it means that nobody has to buy new equipment because we know all governments are stretched, all administrations are stretched in terms of cost. Rescue Net now allows rescue coordination centres to communicate with each other and to see a full log of what's going on. It's like Skype for Rescue Net. It connects everybody so that a, cord, a, a distress situation or an urgency distraction, an emergency, can be coordinated across thousands of miles in real time and it's all logged as to what is going on. And they can bring people into that chat room to ensure that we have it. Every year we go to the, to the WMU, the World Maritime University, and we do a course on uh, safety services. This year we added cyber security. Cyber is, uh, as Caroline identified, one of the risks as we go forward. It's not about being connected, it, uh, the amount you are connected, once you are connected, you are at risk from a cyber perspective. And we will continue to train as much as we possibly can and educate around these things. We work with the International Maritime Rescue Federation to train their search and rescue. This is the one in Rabat, uh, where they, the developing worlds don't have the same resources that maybe the, the Greece or the UK in their, in their uh, search and rescue capabilities. We really want to bring up the level of search and rescue, because when you do get into distress, these are the real heroes, the people that go out. We also sponsor an award, an Hero Award with the International Maritime Rescue Federation in honour of Vladimir Maximov who worked for Inmarsat in the safety services for over 25 years and each year that's presented to somebody who has the largest contribution to search and rescue. And every year we sponsor the Volvo Ocean Race and it's where we test our equipment. These yachts go around the world racing as fast as they possibly can in some of the harshest environments and we put new equipment on board these boats to make sure it will keep up to all the, the environmental conditions that you could possibly have. I'll very quickly go through fleet safety. Anybody who wants to know about it can talk to me. But it's a real next generation. We're using digitalization to move forward in terms of what the safety services are. This is an era of digital disruption. There's a lot of change going on in terms of what this can do. But at the end of the day, it's all about connecting people with people. And as we've had there, it's about relationships and partnerships, making sure we can do things efficiently. <coughs> Safety Net 2 does provide those services in terms of multiple languages as well. English is the language of the sea, but sometimes when you're coordinating a, a, a rescue or um, you need information, sometimes local language needs to be, be provided. I won't go through this. In the past, we, we used to broadcast just to Inmarsat sea satellites and we had a backup system. In the future, we are now broadcast all o over all of our satellites to ensure that everybody gets everything on a global basis. We ensure that all ships can be connected in real time with that availability. I'll leave you with a little video which kind of shows what's happened in the past 35 years of Inmarsat. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> that, shouldn't have, that shouldn't have happened. That was not 35 years. <laughs> I think there's a bit of a technology failure there. Once again. Can you play the video? There you go, click. Oh! It's crashing. I will leave you. I have been there.
30 years and where we want to move in the next perhaps 30 to 50 years in terms of our sustainability. There's been a lot of technology change and there's far more technology change to come, that's for sure. In that video there's far too much conflict and I hope we don't have so much conflict and from a safety services officer, keep safe. Thank you.